Hi everyone, Rob Kajiwara here with Nelson Del Pino, back with another episode of Showbiz, Music, Business, and Politics. Uh, we have our special guest and friend here with us, uh, H.E. Leon Siu, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hawaiian Kingdom and Nobel Peace Prize nominee. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, Hawaii's Christian history and why Christians should support uh, the Hawaiian Kingdom. All right. Well, um, because the Hawaiian Kingdom is a Christian kingdom, that uh, sounds like a very simple answer. But uh, historically, you know, when Hawaii actually was united by, uh, was brought together and united under Kamehameha the Great, um, uh, he was still immersed in his religious system, the kapu system, which had been prevalent in Hawaii for about 700 years. But um, he also was an innovator. So after uniting the islands, he actually pulled, uh, issued a law. The first law that he issued was called, we call the law of the splintered paddle, Mamalahoi Kanavai. And that particular law had to do with an injustice that he had perpetrated years before and realized that he had taken advantage because of his power and his, uh, he was a big warrior. And, and because of that, he had actually tried to, um, uh, well, he had conducted raids against innocent people um, along the shorelines of the Big Island. And until he came to this one time when, when he attacked these people and the fishermen who he was attacking saw him coming and they started running over the lava flats um, along the seashore, um, they were running away from him. Uh, and he gave chase and he actually caught up with them or got, almost got them, and, but he stepped into a crevice in the rock and he got his, his foot stuck fast. So one of the fishermen turned around grabbed the paddle that Kamehameha had, had dropped when he was trapped in the rock, and, and he smashed Kamehameha over the head with this paddle. Um, and the, the paddle splintered, and Kamehameha was knocked cold. So when he came to, and everyone was gone, there was nobody around, uh, and so he realized that, um, well, later in thinking about this, he passed a law. Uh, and we're talking about 40 years later, probably, he passed a law called the Law of the Splinter Paddle, which basically guarantees the safety of anyone to travel with, with anywhere within the Hawaiian Islands uh, without being molested. So, um, so this law actually broke from the kapu system, which he was, uh, had, uh, was under. Uh, Kamehameha died 200 years ago. Um, this, in fact, uh, May 8th of this year, 2019, marks the 200th anniversary of his death. Um, and he's known, of course, as the conqueror of the islands and the great statesman he became, etc. cetera. Um, but it, it, he's also known for having, although he never became a Christian, but having actually opened the door uh, through this law of, of um, generosity and of kindness that he passed which was very different from most of the other laws. The other laws basically said, if you're caught out of the district you're supposed to be in, you're open game for anybody. But he said, no, people should be able to travel in safety and in, in expectation that their rights would be, would be um, uh, honored. So um, his son, uh, Kamehameha uh, died in May, uh, 1819. His son, Kamehameha II, Liholiho, became the king. Um, and in October of that same year, um, he uh, did something that was quite profound. Um, his queen, his mother, the queen Keopulani, and one, one of the other of Kamehameha's queens, who was also appointed the regent, because this, this was a very young, young man, he was about 14 years of age, and he was now the king, so he needed a regent to help to guide him. Um, and so Ka'ahumanu, one of Kamehameha's favorite wives, um, became the regent. Uh, and Ka'ahumanu and Keopulani, as well as the high priest of the Kapu system, whose name was Heva Heva, conspired with, and, and basically they said, we need to get rid of this system. 
And the best way to do it was to have the king publicly um, uh, 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 disentangle himself from the system. That is, so, so at a public luau in Kailua Kona, a place called Moku Honua, um, he sat down at a table that was meant to be serving the women. Uh, at that time, though, this is one of the strict kapus, a tabu, that the men don't eat with the women. And, but he sat down at this table with his queen, with his mother, and with his, the, the queen regent. Um, and initially, and, and essentially, signaled the end of his respect for the kapu system. So he was no longer going to abide by the kapu system. Uh, this sent shockwaves throughout the whole gathering there. And the high priest, Heva Heva, uh, stepped forward and said to the king, now that you've broken the ai kapu, this eating kapu, um, would you... Uh, would you authorize me to destroy the temples? And the king did. And so Heva Heva took a torch to the temple that was right there next to the Heiau, and he burned the temple. And then they ordered all the temples throughout the Hawaiian Islands be burned um, and be desecrated um, because the kapu system was no longer the religion of the land um, or of the, of the realm. So um, this happened uh, in October of 1819, October of 1819. Um, at around the same time, a couple of weeks later, a ship set sail from um, New England, from Boston, uh, full of missionaries. There were 24 missionaries, on, 26 missionaries on board. And they had been urged to come by a young Hawaiian man named Henry Opukaia, who had become, who had been schooled in New England, become a Christian, and wanted the gospel to share. Now he has a really fascinating story of his own, but I won't go into that. But the missionaries departed from Boston on around the 20th of October, um, heading for Hawaii with no idea that one Kamehameha had died, or two that the Kapu system had been overthrown. So they were anticipating coming into a very, very difficult situation with this great, powerful king uh, who is still a heathen king. Um, so anyway, so when they arrived, they find out that the king had died the year before and that the way was now cleared for a new god because the Kapu system had been overthrown. And in fact, the, the person, the high priest Heva Heva, was the one who was waiting for the new God to come. So, to make a very long, long story short, uh, Christianity was welcomed into the islands. It was, initially, there was, a, there was a probationary period for one year to see how things would go, but the king um, e eventually embraced, uh, partic well, first of all, the, his mother, Queen Keopulani, uh, embraced Christianity, and then so did uh, Ka'ahu Manu later and the high priest, Heva Heva, and literally most of the Ali'i of the time. So um, by the 1830s, the Ali'i had pretty much endorsed and had converted to Christianity. Not only that, they ordered that everybody uh, start, start to learn how to read. Um, and the reason was that they wanted the, the, their, their uh, people to read the Bible. And so Bibles were printed, etc., in Hawaiian language, and the people re read. And that's how Hawaii became, by the mid-1800s, Hawaii became the most Christian nation on earth, over 96% Christians, and also over 96% literate, the most literate nation on earth as well. So when Kamehameha uh, III changed from, from being a, an absolute monarch into a constitutional monarch, he actually dedicated his country to God. And he basically said in the Declaration of Rights, and, uh, in the uh, preamble of the Constitution, that no laws in the Hawaiian Kingdom shall be made that are, that are in variance to the laws of Jehovah God or the spirit of the laws of Jehovah God. 
So basically he said, every law that we make in these islands has to conform to biblical law. And this made Hawaii the most Christian nation on earth from a philosophical or from a uh, ideological standpoint as well. So Hawaii was a Christian nation, a decidedly Christian nation. And it was because it was a Christian nation that it avoided uh, becoming colonized by the European powers. Now, some of you may not understand that particular term, but uh, the, the word colonialism uh, had been uh, is is a uh, condition that was created by European countries who sought permission from the Pope, the Roman Catholic Pope, to seize lands that were inhabited by people who were not Christians, by heathens, Saracens, whatever. And basically they're saying that, that these lands belong only to Christians. And so those inhabitants that are there um, don't really matter unless they convert to Christianity. And so the conversion to Christianity in Hawaii had been so profound and so sudden that there wasn't time to create a colonial situation in Hawaii. Hawaii became a Christian nation. So now the European nations had no excuse or no rationality or had no, or no um, plausible uh, reason to uh, try to seize Hawaii and make it into a colony. And Kamehameha III, who had created this Christian or had endorsed Hawaii as a Christian nation, um, uh, sent his uh, emissaries to uh, the United States, to Great Britain, and to France. And basically saying, we want to be recognized as a sovereign Christian nation, along with the rest of you. And so on um, the, the November 28th of 1843, um, the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of France, in a joint proclamation issued in London, uh, proclaimed the Hawaiian Kingdom as a sovereign state, a sovereign country, uh, on the same level as they, they are. So this basically made, uh, guaranteed or it, it, it provided the recognition of Hawaii's sovereignty on the same basis, the Christian definition of what a sovereign country is. So uh, Hawaii became a Christian nation. It became a recognized Christian nation. Um, by by the mid 1800s, and that's how it flourished. So when we talk about the return of the Hawaiian Kingdom, uh, we actually have a legacy to live up to, and that is that of a Christian nation. Very interesting. Thank you for that. We're out of time for today. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Aloha.